Okay. The last thing we want to talk about in this chapter is the idea of a public key infrastructure. Now, this is important. This topic is really important. I can guarantee you there will be a test question involving public key certificates. There will be multiple homework questions, so get this down. Okay, so a certificate, or public key certificate, or digital certificate, okay? A certificate has the name of the user and that user's public key. Okay, in other words, we need a way to distribute public keys. Okay, we need a way to get those to the right people and uh, that sort of thing. The certificate's going to be our vehicle for doing that. Uh, okay, now for this certificate to be any good, because anyone can make up a public key, right, and say, oh, this is Alice's public key and, um, you know, here it is, but it's, you know, really created by Trudy, right? Anybody could do that. So to make it valid, to make it worth the paper, worth the bits it's written on, okay, we have to have it signed by a certificate authority uh, or a CA. Now, the biggest certificate authority out there is there assigned. There are a few others, but uh, they're by far the biggest. So it looks something like this. So I've got this message. It uh, says Alice, because it belongs to Alice. Okay, it's Alice's public key. And then it's got Alice's actual public key, the bits that are her public key sitting here. It's signed by a certificate authority. So this whole thing is signed by a certificate authority. So that's the certificate authority's private key that's been applied to those two things together form the digital certificate, okay? Okay, so what good is this thing? What does this tell us? It's a public key, right? Okay, so when you get this thing, you're supposed to know how else is public key. Now, why would you sign something? What's this business about being signed by the certificate authority? What good does that do us? That's correct. Okay, now there's actually two things going on here. It's an integrity check, right? The signature provides an integrity check. You verify the signature, you check that it matches, that verifies the integrity so the public key is correct. But even more important, what the CA is actually doing here they're saying, they're vouching for the fact that they took and generated a key pair, a public and private key pair. They put the public key here. They gave the corresponding private key to Alice. That's what they're saying by signing this. They're putting their reputation on the line. That we gave the private key to Alice. Alice has the corresponding private key. If you use this public key, only Alice has the private key that can be ripped. That's what they're telling you, okay? Okay, so again, you have to have the, you know, in order to verify this, you have to know what the CA's public key is, but everybody knows that. It's in your browser, okay? So you have the public key to verify the signature. Okay, now the certificate authority in this setup is a trusted third party, meaning we have to trust them to do the right thing. Now, if VeriSign is not doing their job, if they create a certificate, they put the name Alice in there, they put a public key, they give the corresponding private key to Trudy, <coughs> the whole thing's broken, okay? So you are relying on the certificate authority to do the right thing, which means they get the private key to the correct entity, okay? Now, here's kind of the subtle point, or a subtle point. If, suppose I send you Suppose someone sends you a digital certificate, okay? This digital certificate says in it, Alice, and it has a private, uh, public key, and you verify the signature, it's signed by VeriSign, right? You verify the signature and it all verifies. What do you know at that point? What do you know about the private key that corresponds to that thing in the certificate? Uh, what do you know about the private key it corresponds to the public key in there? Only one person has it. And who has it? Alice. Alice. Alice has it. Okay, that's what the so it's what the CA is vouching for. What do you know about the person who sent you this certificate? That's in the message. 
Nothing. <laughs> they sent you a message. Okay, they, that's all you know. Is it Alice that sent you this message? It's a public key, right? This is just a public piece of information that floats around the internet. Anyone can grab this, send it to you, and say, hey, I'm Alice, send me your secret messages, okay? And you verify the signature on it, and you don't send your secret messages, right? You say, all I know is that Alice has the corresponding private key. I don't know who sent that to me, okay? I don't know anything about that person who sent it. This will become really critical when we start talking about protocols, okay? Um, you'll see many examples. Uh, okay, now there is a, you know, what if the CA is trying to do the right thing, but they make a mistake? Okay, so VeriSign actually did this a couple years ago, maybe three or four years ago. They created a digital certificate for Microsoft. They, you know, put it out there. They gave the corresponding private key to, nobody knows. It wasn't Microsoft. Somebody else got the private key. What does that mean? It means electronically, whoever had that private key could act as Microsoft. Okay, now it was revoked right away, and I think nobody knows what even happened to it, but still, it's a potential, potentially a serious problem. Uh, now, a common form for these certificates is so-called X.509. We're not going to say any more about that, but it's something you should have heard when you took this class, so you've heard it. Yeah. Uh, finally, uh, PKI, public key infrastructure. So this is sort of all the bits and pieces you need in order to use public keys. One thing you need is the certificate authority, who's going to create these certificates, get the private keys in the right hands, and sign the certificates. Okay, so that's one thing. You need to worry about what happens. You know, what if I lose my laptop? My private key is on my laptop, right? Somebody's stolen my private key. You need to be able to revoke that certificate so nobody uses it, thinking that I'm the only one who can decrypt it. Somebody else could. So you need to deal with the certificates and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, the thing that makes it kind of interesting with PKI is there's no real standard. There's a, kind of a, a, a general approach that's commonly used in practice, and a couple others that get used a little bit. There's a lot of research. People look for better ways to do PKI all the time. But, you know, there's no general standard, so we'll mention some of the different approaches people use. Uh, okay, so any questions? Yeah. Just looking at a broader picture, it looks to me like the certificate authority is a big weak link in this system. I mean, I've, I've read too well, many spy novels, but if I had to have a mole in some place, <laughs> I know where I want it to be. Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, it would be nice if you could create a system where you didn't have to trust anybody. <laughs> that would be the idea. But, you know, particularly, you'll see this when we talk about protocols. I mean, you just get stuck in a situation where you have to rely on somebody. Even if you're using symmetric keys, right? How do you share the symmetric keys? Right? Um, you have to rely on somebody you trust to do it, right? So, um, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. So just to go back a slide real quickly. Um, uh -huh. You can't verify the identity, the identity of the sender, but you at least know the message was originally encrypted by Alice, right? No, Alice has nothing to do with the creation of the certificate. Certificate is created by a certificate authority. The certificate authority gives the private key to Alice, and then you've got this certificate, which can go to anybody. It's a public key certificate, right? But if you sign something with that public key, then theoretically only Alice can read it, right? That's, yeah. that's, that's what you know. If you encrypt something with the public key in there, only Alice can decrypt it. That's right. Now we need to use that fact, and then when we talk about protocols, we'll use that fact to actually verify who sent it, you know, to determine whether it really was Alice. 